It was on top of Mount Sinai that God gave Moses the dates and observances of the seven feasts of the Lord, which are Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, Trumpets, Atonements, and then the Feast of Tabernacles. It is interesting to note that the Hebrew word for feasts is moed, which more literally translated means divine appointments. And more importantly, all seven feasts point to and are fulfilled in Jesus. These feasts are separated into two seasons, the spring feasts and the fall feasts. Jesus was crucified on Passover. He was then buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and resurrected on the Feast of First Fruits. Fifty days later, the Holy Spirit was given to us on Pentecost. Now, the entire human race exists between the feasts of the spring and fall, which represent the church age. The Lord is harvesting believers and patiently beckoning those who will follow him until the fall feasts come. These fall feasts are to be fulfilled in the second coming of Jesus, and the first of these is the Feast of Trumpets. While the Feast of Atonement represents the second coming, and the Feast of Tabernacles represents the kingdom age of the Lord, we want to celebrate as a church the Feast of Trumpets. Jesus himself said, Behold, I am coming quickly. we should find the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets at the end of the age in the book of Revelation. And that's why the last day prophecies are filled with the trumpets. Trumpets, judgment, and the number seven. But now, here it is, the number seven is speaking of, speaks of fullness. Number seven speaks of completion. It speaks of finishing. The, the week is seven days, time, seven days, seven, complete. So you've got trumpets and you've got seven, that's completion or fulfillment. And so you put it together, what is it, you, you know, you have, you have the theme of the, the, the trumpet sound, the sounds of the power of God. The, so you've got, the, you've got the fullness of God's power being revealed in Revelation. You have the trumpets speak about a king coming. So you've got, you've got the fullness of that. You've got the ultimate king coming in the book of Revelation. The trumpets speak of judgment and you have the you have the final judgments in the book of revelation you got, so you put it together you've got the the seven the trumpets and judgment all there but you also have the book of joshua that is all linked to this as well in the book of joshua you've got trumpets book of revelation you've got trumpets in the book of joshua the trumpets are bringing in judgment book of revelation same thing in the book of Joshua, the trumpets are linked to destruction. Book of Revelation, same thing. In the book of Joshua, there are seven trumpets. Book of Revelation, seven trumpets. Book of Joshua, there are seven who sound each of the seven trumpets. Book of Revelation, there are seven who sound each of the seven trumpets. In the book of Joshua, you've got seven priests sounding the seven trumpets. In the book of Revelation, the seven priests become seven angels sounding the seven trumpets of God. The seven priests are ministers of God's will. The seven angels are ministers of God's will. The seven priests are those who stand before the presence of God. The seven angels are those who stand before the presence of God. In the book of Joshua, there are seven soundings of the trumpet. Every day, there's a sounding of the trumpet. In the book of Revelation, there are seven soundings of the trumpet. In the book of Joshua, the seven soundings reach their peak with the seventh day and the seventh sounding. In the book of Revelation, the trumpets reach their peak with the seventh trumpet sounding. In the book of Joshua, when that, that seventh sounding happens, everything changes. Everything, everything is transformed. In the book of Revelation, when that seventh trumpet is sounded, everything changes. And even here's another thing, you know, in the book of, in the book of Joshua, it's not just seven, it's like, a, it's like a concentric seven of seven of seven. You got seven days, you got seven blasting sounding, you have the seventh day and the seventh blasting and the seventh time on that day, so it's like a seven of a seven. Book of Revelation, you got the same thing. You have seven seals, and when you get to the seven seals, it opens up, comes the seven trumpets. It's a seven of a seven, and, a, and again, at the sound of the trumpet,
the sound of war, the sound of victory, the sound of breakthrough. So you've got here the seven of that, the final breakthrough, the final victory, the final of all these things, the book of Revelation. The trumpets would sound the, the mark, the beginning and the end of times, the changing of days and years. And so in the, in the book of Revelation, you got seven. It's, it's signifying this is the ultimate changing of ages that is happening. The mystery reveals that there's a link between the book of Revelation and the book of Joshua. It is all there. What does it reveal? It's going to give you another, another revelation about Revelation and about everything. The book of Joshua is about coming. What's that, where, I mean, where, does it, where does it take place? What's the context? It's about coming to the end of the wilderness and about to enter the promised land. What is the book of Revelation? It's the end of the age. Just end of the age, and you're about to enter the promised land. See, the book of Revelation isn't just about calamity and tribulation. It's about coming to the end of the old and entering the promised land of God. When Israel entered the promised land, they didn't just enter it. They had a fight. It was a time of war, of kingdoms. So the book of Revelation, the last days are a time of war of kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. The book of Joshua is about the falling of kingdoms, the war, the fall. And, and so the book of Revelation is about the falling of the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of this world, it says. And all the kingdoms of the earth, man's civilization, it's like a Jericho at the end. With the sound of the trumpet, it falls. When the seven priests blew their trumpets, judgment came on Jericho. When the seven angels blow their trumpets, judgment comes upon this age. In the book of Joshua, the land is promised to the Israelites, but is occupied by sinful nations. So this world is as promised to the people of God, but it's occupied by evil kingdoms and systems. It's occupied by the enemy. It's occupied territory. And at the end of the age, that evil is the most manifest. And so in the book of Revelation, in the book of Joshua, the kingdoms that occupy the promised land are cast down. So book of Revelation. In the book of Joshua, the walls come tumbling down. The people of God take the land. In the book of Revelation, the kingdoms of this world come tumbling down and the kingdom of God takes the world. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, What? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever, says that. In the book of Joshua, the Israelites move from camping in the time of temporary dwellings to move into their permanent dwellings. Book of Revelation, end of the age, the people of God move from temporary dwellings to their eternal dwellings, ultimately. With Jericho, the Israelites move from the, the time of living in shadows of the promised land, talking about it but not seeing it, to actually seeing it, to coming home. So, in the book of Revelation, we move from the promise of the promised land to actually seeing it, the kingdom of God. With Jericho, the Israelites move from longing and wanting to actually beholding, so with us. The book of Revelation is a cosmic Jericho, which moves from the time of wanting and desire to the time of arriving, the reality. We will move to seven.